in from the Bible. Are you going to be involved in that? Good. Um, uh, yeah, might be. Yeah. Did you print the sheet out? Yeah. What? Is there a sheet for the... N uh, no, no. Right. Um, right. Uh, Listen, I tell you, find a Bible, if you can. Normally, we're going to read from the International Children's Version, but... I think it might be up there oh, as well. Oh, good. Yeah. Right. Maybe, okay. maybe. Or look at the screens. David says yes. Uh, or look at the screens, uh, because we're going to read from Matthew chapter 25. Uh, and um, why don't I pray before we do that? Father, um, uh, being prepared or being unprepared has consequences, as we're finding out this morning. Uh, please speak to us as we read your word, because we want to be those who are ready for our Lord Jesus' return. Amen. Amen. The reading from Matthew 25, from verse 1. Jesus said... At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten girls who went to wait for the bridegroom. They took their lamps with them. Five of the girls were foolish, and five were wise. The five foolish girls took their lamps, but they did not take more oil for the lamps to burn. The wise girls took their lamps and more oil in jars. The bridegroom was very late. All the girls became sleepy and went to sleep. At midnight, someone cried out, The bridegroom's coming! Come and meet him! Then all the girls woke up and got their lamps ready. But the foolish girls said to the wise, Give us some of your oil! Our lamps are going out! The wise girls answered, No, the oil we have might not be enough for us all. Go to the people who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. So the five foolish girls went to buy oil. While they were gone, the bridegroom came. The girls who were ready went in with the bridegroom to the wedding feast. Then the door was closed and locked. Later, the others came back. They called, Sir, sir, open the door to let us in. But the bridegroom answered, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. So always be ready. You don't know the day or the time the Son of Man will come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Lynn, very much. So the question is, are you ready? And to test your readiness, I have a highly scientific activity. It's called the ruler drop. I've already got one volunteer from the more youthful section. That's you, Reuben. You're the more youthful section. Uh, yeah, up you come. Brilliant. Uh, I need a, a slightly more mature member of the church family because we're going to test the combined reactions. Uh, Reuben just, oh, if you come over here. A volunteer, please, from the more mature end of the church family. Giles, brilliant. Well done. One thing David Griffin taught me was the ab brilliant ability of the, to be voluntold. Right, you know how to do this? Uh, all you have to do is catch the ruler when I drop it. Uh, we're going to write your scores up on the thing. Lynn, would you be happy to do score, score writer, please? Um, so, uh, if you could just hold your fingers sort of like that, perfect. Uh, Ruben, same on this side. You're catching this one. I need to make sure it's the right way up. Lovely. Uh, and all you have to do is grab the ruler, and I'll, I'll tell the scores, okay? <laughs> right. Okay. Next. It's more tricky than it looks. It's more tricky than it looks. So that was early on, and we're just getting our eye in, okay? Ah, right. Giles has tried. Well, no, no, you have to keep your fingers there. Uh, that was about Roman, Roman Britain, Roman Britain. Um, uh, Giles scores 25, uh, Ruben, nil point. I haven't really worked out the scoring system, to be honest, but anyway. Okay, you ready? Yeah, well done, well done. Uh, Ruben's a 17, Giles is a 13, well done. Oh. Not ready. Not ready for that either. I had a pen somewhere, Lynn. In all seriousness. Oh, here, here we go, here we go, here we go, look. I've got this one. There you are. Try that one. Probably won't work either. Right, I think it's going well so far, don't you? Right, good. Here we go. You've got your eye in. Yes, a solid 15 for Giles uh, and 21 for Reuben. Last one. And then you can do some maths, Lynn. Or we'll just declare one of them the winner and hope no one else knows. Brilliant. Uh, Giles, another solid 15. Uh, Ruben, a 17. Uh, 
a round of applause, please, for these, these two. Um, Ruben, I'm going to hang on to you, if that's right. Giles, do go and take your seat. Thank you very much. So the answer, uh, sorry, the answer, Giles, we, we're going to give it to you. Well done. Uh, you're the winner, apparently. <laughs> Maturity pays off in this instance. Uh, but it is quite tricky to be quick enough, to be ready enough to grab the ruler as it drops. Um, and we just thought it'd be interesting. Oh, no, that's not true. We didn't think it'd be interesting. I thought it'd be interesting. <laughs> Lynn thought it was a silly idea, probably. Uh, I thought it'd be interesting to find out how Ruben gets on just over the course of this next little bit while I'm talking to you. Um, so, Ruben, if you're happy to stand over there, and Lynn, if you're happy to do, you can either have the British history ruler uh, there, or you can have uh, the dates ruler. They both have centimeters on. I don't mind which one you use. But if Ruben, if you're just happy to keep doing that, that would be great. And the scores will go up on the, on the board so you can see how he's doing as we go on. In the parable that Jesus has just told, uh, there were 10 girls who were told to wait. Uh, they were part of a wedding celebration. They were friends of the lady who was getting married. And they had an important job to do, didn't they? Their job was to act a bit like the, the runway lights uh, as you come into land. They were to hold their lanterns up and welcome the man who was going to marry the lady into the home. That was their job. Uh, but, as with all of the stories that Jesus told, there's a problem. Uh, there is a problem. And we're told in verse 5, the problem is, the bridegroom, the man who's going to marry the woman who's getting married was very late. We don't know why. Uh, we're not told the reason for that. Um, but um, uh, he was so late that the people who were waiting fell asleep. Then suddenly there's a shout. Uh, here comes the bridegroom. Uh, this is the moment for the lamps, for the light, for the welcome. But not everyone is ready. Have a listen to how Jesus puts it. The foolish girl said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. The wise girls answered, no, the oil we have might not be enough for us all. Not all the girls who were waiting were waiting in the same way. Uh, some had brought extra fuel. Some thought that the, the man who was getting married could be late. And so they had enough to put into these little lamps they might have looked a little bit like this. Uh, don't think large torches. Think tiny little things with a reservoir for probably, I guess, olive oil and a wick that came out of the front. Easy to not have enough oil in that situation if you've got to wait any length of time. There isn't enough oil, so five of the girls who are waiting rush off to see if they can get some more. And when eventually they'd woken the shopkeeper up and she'd opened the shop and found the supply of oil and given them the oil and they'd paid for it and they'd rushed back to the party, it was too late. They weren't able to be let in. What is it that Jesus wants us to do as a result of this parable? Well, it's really obvious, actually. He tells us right at the end. Have a look at verse 13. Jesus says, so always be ready. You don't know the day or the time that the Son of Man will come. He says, be ready for his return because you don't know when it will be. As you can tell, Lynn and I have spectacularly failed to be ready for this service. It wasn't really a surprise that there was going to be a service on Sunday morning. There is one every Sunday morning. But by not being ready, it's all been a little bit shambolic. Like this service, we know that one day Jesus will return. Not as a baby, but as a mighty, mighty king. And he will return to welcome his friends into eternity and to judge the living and the dead. Everyone will stand before him. Jesus has said that. Uh, he always does what he says, so we know it's going to happen. One day he will come back. Lynn and I knew that 
we needed to get an order of service sorted for this service. Uh, we, need to, we needed to get the sheets to the office by Wednesday, but we didn't. We aren't ready, and so this has been a shambles. But here's the thing. We don't know when Jesus will return. He might come back today. Are you ready? It can be more difficult to wait for something if you have to wait a long time. Uh, how, did, how did Reuben get on with the, uh, with the ruler drop test? How was it? Reuben, well done. Thank you very much for being, for being a good sport. Um, <laughs> it is more difficult to grab the ruler when there's a long gap between it, you being told to wait for it and it dropping because we just become a bit less ready, I suppose. In the parable, Jesus told some of the girls weren't ready for the bridegroom's return because they had a long wait. Well, Christians have been waiting for Jesus' return for 2,000 years. Are you ready for him to come back? Something else we learn from this is that people will be surprised when he comes back. In the story, uh, the bridegroom is a little bit like Jesus. And do you remember that the, when the bridegroom came, everyone was asleep until there was a shout a shout, uh, get ready, here he comes. And some were ready and some weren't. I know getting ready for things can be a bit of a pain. We thought about um, Tracy going to the beach. Uh, she needed some friends to carry all the things she needed just to get to the beach. There was so much stuff. And if you're a grown-up, if you're responsible for preparing that for yourself and your children, as you begin to load every piece of plastic you own into the back of the car, you're left thinking to yourself, will this be worth it? The sea's going to be cold, there's going to be sand in the sandwiches, uh, and there'll be nowhere to park. Well, make no mistake, this parable tells us that when Jesus returns, it will be worth it. It will be amazing. There are so many brilliant things about Jesus' return, one of which is, of course, that no longer will our bodies creak and groan. No longer will getting out of bed sort of be accompanied to the sound of popping and creaking as you swing your legs, over, perhaps it's just me, as you swing your legs over the edge of the bed. If that doesn't happen to you yet, wait. <laughs> the, the other amazing thing about Jesus' return is that no longer will we be able to be unkind to one another. Our friendships will be perfect. We will relate to one another perfectly and we'll relate to ourselves perfectly. There won't be fear or mistrust or, or falling out of friendship with each other. But the best thing, the very, very best thing about Jesus' return <laughs> is that we will see him as he is. We will know him perfectly. We will get to be with him forever. And he will be with us. The Bible often describes that as a party, as a feast. Dear friends, waiting for Jesus will be worth it. When uh, Jesus comes back, no one's going to think to themselves, I wish I hadn't bothered. I wish I hadn't bothered being ready for his return. We'll be far too busy leaping up and down for joy. Are you ready? Are you trusting Jesus? Have you asked him to, to forgive you for your sins? Is he your friend? Are you thankful for his death for you on the cross? If so, then you're ready. If you've done that, one of the signs that you will have done that is that you'll be busy doing what, what Jesus did, busy uh, loving God his Father, living for him, living with him as the most important person in your day, spending time with him each day, reading his word and speaking to him in prayer. You'll be busy loving those people God has placed around you, using your time and your talents, your, your gifts, your treasure for the good of others. None of those things are the things that make you ready for his return. They're rather signs that you are ready. So let me ask you one more time. As you look at your life, are you ready to stand before Jesus? If he came back tomorrow... If he came back tonight, 
what would you say? Praise God. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, our world is in a mess. And we need you to come back and put right all the wrong things. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, we're sorry when by our words and the things that we've done, we have added to the unhappiness of the world. We shouldn't have. We are sorry. Please forgive us. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, thank you for your love. Thank you that we can know that love now and one day we will experience that love in all its power. We long for that day. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, we're busy. Sorry that in our busyness we forget about you and your call for us to be ready for when you return. Please help us to be trusting you when you come back. Amen. Lord Jesus, you call people to love, who love you to live like you and to live for you. We're sorry when we haven't done that. Please help us. Amen.